I will call this meeting to order. I don't think there's anyone excused from the meeting. Welcome, Ellen Unruh. Hope you're feeling well. Good to see you there. Um, the minutes have been circulated. Are there any errors or omissions to the minutes? And if not, what do you do? Uh, a motion to go ahead, Polly? Uh, point 10 3 in regards to Joint Meeting Grassland School Division. Um, perhaps racism, I used that word, but made that the uh, context was more cultural awareness. Um, I mentioned that to Ariana, so that maybe the minutes should be amended to reflect uh, perhaps a better description. Okay, thank you. So that adjustment has been made. Uh, the motion to accept, Neil? We, we accept. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> I will call for any post agenda items. Is there anything to add to the agenda that has not already been circulated? If not, a motion to approve the agenda, adopt the agenda for today's meeting would be in order. Holly, you make the motion? Yeah. Yes, I make that motion, okay. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. That is carried. We'll move to, uh, just, just in relation to the agenda, we do have uh, a bylaw <coughs> reading at 1045, so, so we will break to item number 7.6, I believe, at that point. Uh, but uh, question period or notices of motion, are there any questions from anyone um, with regard to the meeting today? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number seven, bylaws and 7.1. Bylaw 2024-22 Special Tax the Scandia Communal Raw Water Irrigation System. Three, three readings. Um, Shannon, please. Uh, so I'm presenting uh, this bylaw 2024-22, which is the Scandia Communal Raw Water Tax. Uh, the special tax bylaw applies to uh, applies a levy to the parcels in Scandia that are serviced by the raw water system. Uh, the rate for 2022 is set at uh, $60 per service, um, and I'm looking for three readings today. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Councillor Johnson, please. It's not a question, but on the bylaw itself, I believe there's an error. Number three says the combined estimated cost of the service the year 2021. I think just instead of in 2022. Yeah. Okay, that will be adjusted. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Kelly, please. Shannon, can you tell us what the rate was last year? Uh, it was 60 as well. Thank you. I'll make motion for first reading. First reading. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Councillor Christman. Okay, all in favor that we uh, approve first reading of this bylaw, please indicate. That's carried. <coughs> With very little time elapsed, we'll move to second reading. Is there a motion to that effect, uh, Councillor? I move that this bylaw receive second reading. Okay, all in favor of that, please indicate. That's carried. And similarly with third reading, I'm sorry, that's right. A motion for consent for third reading. Uh, um, uh, consent for, for third Adina reading. Councillor Skandrup, thank you. All in favor that we approve consent for third reading, please indicate that is carried. And with that, uh, if someone would make a motion. Okay, Dan, please. A motion for third reading. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll move to item 7.2, Rolling Hills, please. Special tax. Yes, yeah, so bylaw 2023-22 is for the Rolling Hills Communal Raw Water Special Tax. Uh, this special levy uh, bylaw applies levies to the parcels in Rolling Hills that benefit from the irrigation system. 
so this rate is set at $110, which is $10 more than last year. Um, and I'm looking for three readings for this one as well, please. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Holly, please. Please tell me how many properties there are. I looked at the list, didn't add it up. I'm just curious. It's uh, obviously a lot more than Scandia. Uh, there's 147. Okay. Any other questions? If not, uh, a motion for first reading of bylaw 2023-22. Great. I'll make that uh, move. Okay, thank you. All in favor of first reading approval? That's carried, thank you. Uh, similarly with second reading, someone, Councillor Kopp? I'll make the motion for second reading. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. And then um, a, a motion of consent for third reading of bylaw 2023-22. Councillor Johnson. I make that motion. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. And a motion for third reading of 2023, Amanda. I'll make that motion. Thank you. All in favor of approving third reading, please indicate. That is carried. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll move to item 7.3, bylaw 2022-22, special tax for EID uh, water users. Go ahead. So this bylaw um, resulted from an agreement with the EID uh, for the collection of fees for household and rural water use. Uh, the EID invoices the county for the water fees each year and we collect those fees from the parcels through the special tax bylaw. Uh, the levy amounts and the parcels to be included are supplied by the EID um, annually and I am looking for three readings for this one as well, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, What's, any questions with regard to this or a, a motion for first reading? Kelly, please. Motion. First motion to approve. Okay, thank you. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Similarly, uh, second reading, a motion. Uh, Adina, please. I'll make that motion. Thank you. All in favor of second reading? That is carried and a um, motion of consent for third reading. Holly, please. I'll move the consent to get it. Okay, thank you. All in favor? That's carried. And similarly, a motion for third reading. Uh, Dan, please. Motion for third reading. Okay, all in favor of that, please indicate. That is carried. Thank you. Okay, that moves us to item 7.3, that's right, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, bylaw 2028-22, the amendment to bylaw 1881-17, local improvement, Tilly infrastructure upgrades, first reading. Go ahead, Shannon, please. Uh, so this bylaw is uh, the result of a parcel of land that was subdivided and developed into a residential development. Uh, the MGA states that a local improvement bylaw, uh, so 1881-17, uh, must be revised so that each parcel is levied the, their fair share. Uh, I'm recommending first reading now and second and third at the next council meeting. Okay, any questions with regard to this? Holly, please. Just as a process here, so if you didn't have to do the number of properties to change that, would it still be coming to us every year or is it just because this year is the change? It's just this year because of the change. So we hadn't edited this one before because the parcels were all consistent. Okay, any other questions or a motion to approve first reading? Uh, Greg, please. I'll move uh, first, first reading. reading. Okay. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. 
Now we go to item 7.5, bylaw 2027-22, local improvement, North Headgate's first reading as well. Please, Shannon. Uh, so this is a, a new bylaw. Uh, it is a, uh, for the local, the North Headgate's local improvement project. Uh, this project began in 2019 with the North Headgate's area redevelopment plan. Um, and the construction uh, has been completed. Uh, the bylaw is structured for payment over 25 years for the total cost of the project. Um, and, that, and the interest rate is uh, from the Alberta Capital Finance Authority. Um, and it's, the bylaw starts in 2022 and final payment will be made 2046. Uh, I'm looking for first reading today and second and third at the next uh, meeting, please. Thank you, Shannon. Any questions with regard to this? Item. Yes, Holly, please. Um, are you expecting people to be okay with this or a little upset with this? Uh, currently, there's um, it's levied against the one parcel. Uh, it hasn't been subdivided or anything yet, uh, but the landowner is fully aware of all this, um, and I'll be sending him a copy of the bylaw after the first reading. But he he totally knows all of everything, so. Okay, thank you, Kelly, please. And just to back that up, the ratepayers were involved as well, or the residents, I should call them. Until now, they haven't been ratepayers. So um, yeah, it's a long time coming. It's great to have it to this point, and um, I would be happy to make first reading on this one. Okay, thank you, Kelly. All in favor of first reading, please indicate. That is carried as well, thank you. So we'll come back at 7.40 or 10.45, right? Yeah, thank you, Shannon. We can jump down to uh, guest items here at 9.3.2 and then 10.1. What we've got here? 9.3? Yeah. Jeff, do you want to come and... Uh, 9.3.2. 9.3.2 is... Um, Community Planning Association of Alberta Annual Conference. Jeff, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so the CPAA, the Community Planning Association of Alberta, is holding its annual conference May 2nd to 4th. Um, historically, the conference was held in person in Red Deer at the Black Knight Inn. Um, through COVID, uh, the Black Knight Inn closed its doors, so the new location is in Leduc. Um, I, I joined the board of directors of the CPAA back in 2020, um, just at the beginning of COVID. So we haven't had the opportunity to have an in-person conference. Uh, it was virtual last year. Um, there were some really great presentations um, and they've got a, a nice little lineup of presenters here for their conference in early May. Um, I, I believe historically that uh, one to two council members had attended the conference every year. Um, you know, coming coming out of COVID, there's definitely concern amongst the board um, uh, of the attendance rate at the conference. You know, we're sneaking up on it and the numbers are below where they have been in the past. So um, uh, the, the board's been asked to, to uh, address their councils and, and address their colleagues and, and municipal partners to, to try to uh, see if anybody would be interested in attending. So th that's why it's here. I, I'm not sure if any of our councillors have attended that this in the past uh, and could comment on it but uh, uh, again neither have I but but I do believe that uh, they, they they have found benefit out of it uh, in, in the past so it's uh, attached to the agenda for consideration right thank you Jeff are there any questions for Jeff with regard to this Holly please it's actually just a comment um, I certainly am not available to go in May but I thought it looked really good for someone to go from the town to council it's interesting to me Thank you, Neil. Yeah, I, I agree with Holly on that. I think it'd be really good for a couple of councillors to go. I'm, I'm, I can't make it, but right. somebody volunteer. Right, and I think one of our options is either to just accept this as information or, or pass a motion that it become a function of council for one or two people to go potentially. Uh, oh, Kelly, please. <laughs> I have not attended in the past and um, I think as Planning Chair, I would like to volunteer this time around. Sure. Thank you. Um, 
Is there someone else who would be interested in attending with, with Kelly? Uh, first of all, uh, pleasure of counsel. I, uh, we have had some suggestion that there may be a couple of people go with it. Dan? Yeah, I'd, it'd be, I'd be interested in going if, if, there's, if there's benefit in sending two of us. Okay. So we have two councillors who are interested and willing to go. Do we have a motion from Council Neal, please? I'm not sure how you want to word that, but I will make the motion that the two councillors and Jeff become a function of council or however you work. Sure that this convention become a function of council for Councillor Christman and Councillor Short, right? Any further discussion? All in favor, please indicate. Okay, that is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, Jeff, we'll go to 10.1, which is also a tender award for engineering services for the Newell County Wastewater Project Phase 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Jeff, this might be... Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, th there's an RFD in front of you as well as a, uh, a, a letter and, and minor proposal from M MPE Engineering Limited. Um, hi history behind this is uh, um, I, I did place a notice of intention on the Alberta Purchasing Connection site to um, ensure we were remaining in line with uh, the, the trade agreements that, that we are subject to. Um, so, I, I post a notice of intention to award the engineering contract to MPE Engineering Limited for the CNWP phase two project on uh, February 14th on the site. And I requested that anybody with any objections or concerns, please submit a letter by uh, February 28th. Um, and, and then we would have carried on to an RFP process to, to secure an engineering company. Um, no, no submissions were received uh, at, at all. Um, some of the reasoning behind it is quite obvious that, that was stated in that notice of intention. MP Engineering has been involved in, in the county uh, water distribution since the early 2000s. They uh, designed the upgrade to the City of Brooks water treatment plant to facilitate the production of the amount of water um, to make the regional transmission transmission lines ago. Um, they designed the regional transmission lines that went out to uh, the town of Bizano, the, the villages, uh, and all of the hamlets in the county. And again, they were onboarded uh, for the design and construction supervision of the first phase of the rural water project. Um, their intimate knowledge with the hydraulics of the system and, and how the system works, their um, staff that uh, are still present that were involved in, in many of the projects that we've worked on up to this date with them, make them an invaluable asset in moving forward with the second phase of the water project. And my goal with uh, posting this notice of intention was just that, uh, you know, to a, secure the uh, engineering consultant most advantageous to the county. B, give everybody an opportunity if they thought that they uh, would have had the ability to provide a better service to state that and, and submit that uh, to us. And, and third, I, uh, I, I have a real problem uh, putting out requests for proposals to a, a number of contractors and, and, and consultants and, and putting onerous work on them that they're not getting paid for, for, you know, something that I think the writing is what is pretty much on the wall for anyways. So um, as you see in the package, MP Engineering has submitted a, a plan of some of the things they want to get working on so we can meet our goals and in, in, in kind of what I've stated on construction for the second phase of this rural water um, going forward. They they want to kick some environmental loose. They want to kick some land guys loose. We, we want to um, start, start developing alignments and looking at the regulatory approvals, pipeline crossings, things like that, that are going to be needed to, um, you know, get some shovels in the ground this fall and winter, which we, we really hope to um, tackle a lot of that cultivated land in, in this winter um, to, to get that out of the way. And then maybe that opens up the opportunity for some uh, uh, easier work in unfrozen ground in some of the subdivisions and, and whatever else uh, coming next next summer. Um, so that they have submitted that letter. They've, they've submitted um, uh, a couple of people's fee, uh, hourly fees in that letter um, that uh, would be working on these things leading up to um, the April 14th deadline when we can actually truly finalize and, and, and define a scope of what this project looks like. Um, 
I've reviewed the fees. We, we, we get uh, fees from engineering consultants all the time. And, and these fees are very well in line with any um, fees for people doing that type of work from the drafting um, to the supervising to, to the, the project sponsor from the corporate level. Um, I, I believe that there is, uh, it, it would cause a lot of strain and stress on uh, administration as well as the successful engineering consultant in, uh, you know, retraining somebody uh, other than MPE to um, facilitate this project for us. And, and, you know, on top of that, we've never had uh, any major issues that, that weren't immediately dealt with working with them. Um, they, they, they are familiar with the area. They've worked with the county. They work with the EAD extensively. They work with Newell Regional Services. Um, so today, I, I would like a motion to um, uh, award the engineering services contract to MP Engineering Limited for the CNWP Phase Two. Um, and, and you know, in their letter, they do talk about an upset limit up until a, a April 14th. And at that time, when, when we know um, the, the grand scope of, of where we're going, and, and we can kind of put a number to it, um, we'll, we'll re-engage each other and, and, and come up with a, a more tight. Um, fee approximation. In the feasibility study, it was $1.4 million for engineering fees, which was taken as 10% of the total construction costs. It's kind of a kind of a shot in the dark at that time, not knowing how many. And again, that's that's why we really need to get to April 14th. But I'd like to to uh, kick them loose on a few of the preliminary things here in, in the interim. So uh, I can answer any questions uh, and just looking for that motion. Thank you, Jeff. Are there questions? Holly, please. Because we don't have the replies back from people as to whether or not everybody wants water or not. Is there a chance they'll be doing work that's not necessary because a certain area won't really have anything? I, I would say possibly, but we're, we're going to do everything we can to guard against that. Some, some of the bigger um, things that we need to look at uh, immediately are our wetlands, our, our environmental features of the land, our historical resources features of the land, and, and a lot of those things aren't precise and, and compact. They're, they're larger general areas, you know, the area along the Matsuan Creek, for instance, and some of the stuff that we, we would be regulated to do when crossing in there, if crossing in there, and these are kind of the larger scale things we want to look at. At the same time, we want to start developing alignments to the people that have registered so we can start identifying the crossings that we're going to need and we can reach out to you know uh, the Alta links the CNRLs the Torxons who, whoever's out there so we can get that conversation started and that ball rolling um, because you know regulatory processes don't happen overnight and um, we, we want to ensure the best chance to start sinking shovels into the ground this fall okay thank you any other questions for Jeff how many applications? Oh, go ahead. Oh, how many applications have you had to date? Uh, Jolene's double checking because our system has been just out of commission for a, a little bit here, but I think we're up to around 250 or 260 applications. Um, I would have hoped we would have had more at this time, but I, I also uh, lean on the fact that people are procrastinators and it, it's going to get busy in here because um, I have been leafing around the map and, and there's lots of people that I know I've talked to personally that will be registering. It just hasn't happened at this time. So um, hopefully in, in the next two, three weeks, we'll uh, be really busy in here. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If not, is someone ready to make a motion? Adina, please. So I'll move that we uh, award the contract for supply of engineering to MPE. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor, please indicate. And that is carried. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, let's let's move back to 8.1. Todd, are you online here? Would you be prepared to give us the your egg field limbs report? Yes, I am here, and uh, thank you. If it's okay, I can do it from up here. We can see you. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I submitted it for the. Uh, agenda so you should have read it I'm sure and uh, we're just quite impressed with the uh, the report for sure 
Uh, but we are super excited for spring as always, um, as everybody's preparing for, for planting and the calves bouncing around, it's always a good time. Uh, I think we can all note that uh, with spring certainly comes gophers and we've definitely seen a lot of them out already. Uh, unfortunately, we have been receiving lots of calls for 2% liquid strychnine and uh, that tool has been removed from the producer's toolbox, so we don't have that. Uh, but we're just trying to work with them to find some suitable solutions. We did start our Hamlet Gopher program, uh, but I lied to you. Uh, we had intended to start on the 15th, but in fact, we only started yesterday. Uh, but we put out Rosal in bait stations in Rolling Hills, Lake Newell Resort, and the Patricia Rodeo Grounds. And we also partner with Pisano at the airport there as well. So we've had, we have had already some uh, livestock rentals and this is uh, certainly out of date, but there are some, uh, some rentals there that have been out. Uh, in terms of our uh, seasonal staff that are coming back, we've got some returning uh, staff. We've also got some new hires and we have lots of projects lined up waiting for when everybody gets here. We did spend a considerable amount of time updating our standard operating procedures for the county driven work, um, as well as some of the stuff that's been requested from our partners. And I think the good news is we've heard back from most of our partners, um, things are gonna be status quo. So we'll be doing lots of contract work uh, this year again. Uh, we do have a new teammate at Emerson Bridge Park. Um, pretty excited for that. Gates will be opening on May 19th. Uh, we continue to field many calls, uh, multiples per day, which is fantastic. Lots of interests, uh, mostly from outside of the area. Uh, most recently, we had a lady from Washington that uh, is interested in staying at the park for, for a month or two this summer. So that's pretty fantastic news. Um, we, yeah, so, sorry, and I guess the reason I bring that up is because we are a first come, first serve uh, campground. So many people, when they call, they're looking to book a site um, and they are a little bit disappointed that we don't book. Uh, but at the same time, I think they understand our reasoning. And uh, just so if you're not aware, our reasoning for being first come, first serve is currently the uh, ratepayers of the County of Newell do subsidize the park. Um, so until we can get it to where it's 100% cost recovery, we don't feel it's um, reasonable to make it easier for out of county people to, uh, to book at the campground and, and take it away from the people that are subsidizing it. So that was that was our theory anyways, and if that changes, we can we can surely uh, make adjustments. We are still working through the EFP process with a few producers and, and happy to do so. So if anybody is out there that needs to do an environmental farm plan, I am that guy until we can get Catherine back. And uh, I certainly enjoy the conversations and the, uh, and the workbook. We did have a soil erosion event that occurred in February. Uh, we were, able to chat with many of the producers and a lot of guys put in some uh, reactive control measures in place. So some of those were um, working the land to bring up some soil lumps. Uh, some of them put in bales in corners to try to alleviate um, the, the dry corners from moving around. And some guys were spreading manure and getting the approvals through NRCB to do so. So we were happy about that. Uh, we certainly know that proactive measures are a lot less costly and typically more effective. Um, so we are gonna be doing a soil erosion survey. We're bringing one of our seasonal staff in a little bit early. Um, to complete that, um, this survey will be able to better understand, I think the extent that our infrastructure was uh, impacted, and then we can determine a uh, route forward after that. So keep your eyes on social media page. Um, Morgan and Jolene have created a wonderful Weed Wednesday program that should be running throughout the summer. And that is what I have for you. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Todd. Uh, are there any questions from council for Todd? Uh, Holly, please. Hi, Todd. Just curious how well the Rosal bait, sta bait stations are working and why you chose those particular locations for them. Um, specifically to the places we do them now is just was from uh, public concerns or requests in the past. Um, and then we've been running these programs for the last uh, well, multiple years now. Um, specific to Rolling Hills, uh, the, the school grounds were, were overrun with gophers and we started that program with them and, and that's surrounding the grasslands uh, school grounds. 
uh, Lake Newell Resort, we had concerns from the Hamlet Advisory Group and we, we uh, implemented that program there. And then the Patricia Rodeo Grounds, being that it's close to town, um, it, it is kind of, um, we wouldn't be able to use strychnine there. Um, and the, at one time there was a fella that did some uh, control work by, by shooting. And just because it's so close to town, that was not really determined to be the best route. So we, uh, we offered uh, to do the rose all bait there and just control them, if that makes sense. Thank you, uh, Greg, you've got a question. Hi, good morning. I'm just wondering that uh, the rose all uh, bait stations, um, is there, with that type of chemical, is there any risk to say dogs and and uh, birds of prey and things like that? Is that the reason, one of the reasons why uh, the switch has been done to that? Yeah, Rosal is a, a, a product that is best used early in the spring. It's called a multi-feed anticoagulant. So they have to eat the Rosal. The gophers have to eat the Rosal, um, a pretty big part of their diet for a considerable amount of time. So what happens is, they, they eat the product and it kind of makes them feel sick, but if they have no other options to eat, they want to continue to eat that, uh, that poison. And then eventually they succumb to it. So that's kind of works in our favor. So whether it might be a pet, whether it might be a, a bird, um, if they eat a gopher, they're going to have that same maybe sore stomach and uh, they won't want to eat that again. That, that's what we've experienced anyways. Um, and also with that Rosal, Greg, uh, sorry, Councillor Screever, we uh, we have to inspect the area that we're poisoning every, I think it's every day, um, and, and Howard does that for us, and so we pick up anything that we find that might be dead, uh, we kick things back in the hole, and uh, try to, to limit any secondary exposure as we can. Does that answer your question, Greg? It or does, Count yes, thank you. <laughs> sorry, not very formal. That's okay. Thanks, Todd. Any other questions? If not, a motion to accept the Bag Fieldman's report would be in place. Greg, please, all in favor? Please indicate that is carried. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Appreciate that. With that, we'll move to item 7.6, our scheduled discussion of bylaw 2030-22-22 land use agreement 001, which we'll look for the first reading this morning. Maria Jackson will take us through that, but I'm gonna suggest that uh, we have several of the of the applicants online with us. So I'm gonna suggest we begin with some introductions of people in the room and then invite the the uh, those who've joined us online to introduce themselves. Neil, do you wanna start with introductions, please? Uh, Neil Johnson, Division 10 rep. Amanda Philpot, Division 8. Ellen Onra. Oh. Go, ahead. Oops. Go ahead, Ellen. Oh, thank you. Uh, Ellen Onra, and I represent the Division Number 7, and I'm with you via um, virtual. Thank you. Go ahead. Sorry, Ellen. Um, Greg Screever, Division 5, Lake New Resort, and Cassis. Good morning, Kelly Chrisman. I'm from the west side of the county. Arno Dirksen from the Jam Area Division 9. Matt Fenske, County CAO. Good morning, Holly Johnson, Division 4, Scandia, Rainier, and Bow City. Good morning, Adina Scandra, Division 2, the Tilly area. Good morning, Dan Short, Division 1, Rolling Hills. Hi, I'm Lynette Kopp, Division 3, Patricia Millicent area. Arianna Nielsen, Executive Assistant. Sandra Stanley, Brooks Bulletin. Uh, good morning, I'm Maria Jackson. Um, we have emailed back and forth. It's nice to put a face to the name. I'm the Supervisor of Planning and Development at the county. Right, and online we have Eric. Oh. I think you're muted. Eric Cunnington from Colliers, as well as Paul Swire from Cunnington, is that correct? And then also Celia Patrician from Suncor, I believe. Welcome all, thank you for joining us. And with that, I'll invite uh, Maria to, to uh, present 
uh, the bylaw for first reading, please. Thank you. Um, the purpose of this bylaw is to redesignate um, Plan 791063 Block A um, from Agriculture General District to the Business Rural District. Um, the applicant has indicated that they'd like to prepare this land for sale. Um, the subject parcel is 14 and a half acres uh, and it is located just outside of Brooks within the City of Brooks Intermunicipal Development Plan area. Um, and it once housed the gas station and restaurant convenience store. Um, so the, the subject property was subdivided in 78 for that purpose and the development was demolished around 2014. Um, and in 2019, there was some work done with um, old area structure plans and redesignating lands back to, at that time it would have been fringe, but to um, designate those lands back to what they're currently being used for. So mostly agriculture. Um, in this case, this parcel was included in that redesignation process. Um, and the applicant would like to put this back to what it was pre-2019. Um, so that would be rural business. Um, some of the uses that would be allowed um, on this parcel as a rural business parcel that is not able to be used on an agricultural um, zoned parcel would include um, light and medium industrial, um, retail, uh, uses, auction mart, bulk fuel station, gas station, recycling compost facility, self-storage, uh, truck stop, vehicle sales and service. So that's not an inclusive list, but it gives you an idea of what uses would be allowed um, should this land use amendment uh, be passed by council. And um, the applicants are here if you had further questions for them. Right, thank you, Maria. Are there any questions from Council for either uh, Maria or, or the applicants? Neil? I think it's a good uh, use for the piece of ground, like at the steel petrocan station, right? Now that's never going back to agriculture and it'd be nice to get something out there. I totally support it. Thank you. Oh, Maria, go ahead, please. Sorry, I guess I didn't follow through with my recommendation, but as Councillor Johnson said, that staff would recommend that given the development history, um, the parcel size and the location to Trans Canada Highway, we would um, recommend that this be passed. Yeah, thank you. Great, thank you. So we have a recommendation. Uh, Greg, please. Just on a general note, is there, um, and maybe the uh, that people online or be able to answer this. Is there any environmental concerns at this particular location uh, still ongoing or is it, is it, are we all safe to go for a sale on this? Uh, I'm happy to address it, although I'm also joined today by uh, Paul Swire, who uh, probably can speak to it better. My name is Eric Cunnington. I'm a uh, director of development uh, from Collier's Development Advisory and representing Suncor on the, the rezoning for this. Um, so the, there is likely some contamination on the site. Uh, Suncor uh, typically likes to, the intent would be to remediate the property uh, to applicable standards once the property is under purchase to sale. Uh, that way the buyer is then able to get the, the, uh, the type of uh, environmental process that they need. Otherwise, we could uh, undertake the process and not get something that is suitable for the buyer. So that would be money wasted. So I don't know, Paul, if there's something else you'd want to add to that. No, I think you got it. I mean, they, there, there's likely contamination on the property from its former use. Um, that would be remediated to the applicable standard um, as under uh, a condition of sale. Um, Suncor prefers to do the remediation as part of the sale so that like Eric mentioned, the, the property is remediated to a standard that is going to be suitable for the buyer's use, um, as well as if, you know, if it was done previously, uh, you, don't know, you don't know what the buyer's use would be, and you could also run the risk of standards changing or something over time. So they'd like to do it as close as possible to the sale as, uh, as feasible. Okay, thank you. 
any other questions? Holly, please. So does, am I understand that Suncor Energy still owns the property and Collier Stretch Consulting is working on the property for them, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Any other questions, uh, Kelly? No, okay. Uh, so Dan, please. Did we hear back from the city of Brooks with, they, with no concerns or just silence from them? No, that's a good question. So because this is in the IDP area, once council, um, if council gives first reading and the go ahead that this is something that um, the group would like to see, then we will present it to the city of Brooks for their input yeah. prior to the public hearing. Thank you. Any other questions, Lynette, please? I'm ready to make the motion. Okay, I'd accept that or entertain that, please. For first reading to be given to bylaw 2030-22. Thank you. Lynette, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion for first reading, please indicate that is carried. Thank you and thank you for the applicants for joining us today. And, and uh, that concludes item number 7.6. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you. And let's move to item 9.1, administrative business. Uh, Ariana, have you got some information for us or considerations for us regarding canceling rescheduled meetings? Um, yeah, so May 5th, the, the morning of May 5th, starting at 10.30 and going through lunch will be the RMA member visit. Um, I think we need a formal motion doing something with the MPC and council meetings just because we have to advertise that to the public. Uh, so I outlined a couple options there. We could either start MPC at 1 with council starting right after it. You could cancel the meeting entirely if we had no agenda items, which isn't likely. Or you could shift it. You could shift the May schedule a week so the two meetings in May would be on the 12th and the 26th. And there's, a, there's an extra week at the end of May so it doesn't affect the June schedule. So you could do any of those things. Okay, thank you, Ariana. What is Council's uh, preference or consideration here? Kelly, have you got a perspective for us? I do have a preference, and because of the travel, I would like us to start our meeting at 1 o'clock after our guests leave, if that's not too crowded. Um, that's just my thoughts on the situation. I think that's good consideration in terms of efficiency. We're going to be here anyway. We might as well have a meeting. Uh, Greg? Um, I'm scheduled not to be uh, able to make that May 5th meeting uh, regardless. So uh, whatever we decide, but it would be great to have it either postponed or, or uh, put off to the next meeting. That's my thoughts anyway. Okay, thank you. Holly, please. I was going to say that there isn't a lot on the agenda. Perhaps we could bump it all to the 19th. Um, often our meetings are ending up being quite short, um, like today will be done fairly early and, and might not be the best use of all the mileage. I mean, that day wouldn't really matter because we already are here, but um, it's always good to save money where possible. Thank you, uh, Ariana. You've got. Yeah, I think the plan is if we were starting in the afternoon, we were going to have only items that had to be dealt with that day, so it, it would be a short meeting regardless. Right, and I guess the agenda for that meeting is some time away anyway, so uh, it, it will be light at this point, but it may fill up, or there may, may be some things that we need to deal with you know, by that time frame, but there are options anyway. Anyone else have a perspective or someone ready to make a motion? Holly, please. I'm just looking at the time. It's from 10.30, basically, and we're starting a meeting at 1. Is that enough time? I think they talked about two to three hours. Is, is During the MPC at 1, is that actually enough time for us to meet with the RMA and get our business done and give them a good sense of, the, of uh, our area? Um, do we, how tight is their schedule? Do, are, do we know what they're, are they leaving at a certain point? Absolutely. Um, they probably want to 
like they want lunch included and then I assume they would leave after lunch to move on to the other because they had three or four municipalities in the south that they wanted to right. group together on the same day so they're probably going somewhere else in the afternoon right I think we can all imagine them wanting to stay for the rest of the day but they probably won't so right um well, I'm prepared to accept a motion if someone has direction for us with regard to that day. Do we, do we want to have the meeting at one o'clock or what's your preference? Edina, please. I'd like to make a motion that we um, just have our regular meeting on the 19th instead of the 19th day. Sorry. Um, instead of having a council meeting on the 5th. Okay. So that so not okay is, is that one of the no well it's a it's a new option the option suggested option three yeah that's right option three yes it's there okay any further considerations ready for the question neil please yeah, don't we have two councillors that are going to be with Jeff at that convention right on the 5th anyway? It's over on the 4th. Oh, okay. okay. Um, just, question? Just a note that on the May 19th was the date that Grassland School Division meeting was tentatively scheduled for. So, and that was for supper, I believe. So that's so something that, to think about that. Of, in terms of, it would be a long meeting, but in terms of the travel efficiency, it would be there for us. Ready for the question? All in, current question is that we approve option number three, cancel the MPC council meetings of May the 5th, 2022, and the next regular scheduled MPC council meeting be held on May the 19th. All in favor of that motion, please indicate. Opposed? That's carried, thank you. Thank you, Arianna. Moving to um, Item 9.2, Councillor pay sheets for February 2022. Uh, who is speaking to that? Or uh, Dan, please. So I said last month uh, we were going to be better. <laughs> I might have lied. Um, we've upgraded our record keeping and, and whatnot to us and uh, that was a major learning curve for us. So we uh, we only just figured out how to read it last night. So we don't have really solid numbers for you for the changes. There are some changes to be made, again, pretty minor. So I, I, I think I think it needs to be approved today, um, but I, I'm not sure um, if we can put it off till next meeting. If that works for Jackie, then then we'll have the, the the information sent out and then everybody will know. Otherwise, we can do it like we did last time, approve it with changes, and I'll email everybody the changes before I submit it to Jackie, but I don't think that's the right way to be doing it. Um, yeah, the new, the new system's e easier once you learn it. <laughs> so, so to the read, yes. we all need to learn it because we're all responsible. So I need a tutorial on it, please. Because <laughs> I can't, I need, really. <laughs> the, the biggest thing for us was the, uh, the review sheets that get handed to us and the way they're presented. It changed and it does make it easier, but it's very different. So I had to have a meeting with Jackie on Monday to learn what to be looking for. There's some things in there that it, it's rounding uh, where I don't think it should be. Um, some of the point fives are being changed, rounded up to, to whole numbers. And I'm trying to decipher whether or not that's the program that's doing that or whether it's um, um, individuals' contributions that's changing that. So it's, 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she's laughing at me, what's going on here? <laughs> but yeah, we're yeah. We 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 don't have the changes ready to present. That's 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 where I'm going. Okay. Oh uh, Matt, please go ahead. I, I think you should be all right uh, if you needed the additional time. Our next meeting is April seventh. That should give uh, Jackie enough time to uh make the changes, submit to the bank and uh get you paid by your typical uh pay date, eighteenth okay. of the month kind of a thing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you, Jeff, or a person, oh boy. <laughs> Dan, Dan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Which, well, how far are we? Let's go to item 9.3, requests for functions of council. Are there any requests for functions of council? Um, Adina, please. I'm not sure this is the spot for it, but I was wondering about uh, the opportunity of being able to speak to City of Brooks Council about the veterinary shortage. Gord Krebs has asked me to uh, present a letter there to them. Okay, I think that's appropriate neil please yeah you should probably come to joint services for that we've had several meetings and reports every month about debts through joint services but if you've got more to add schedule in come with craig and i and kelly but that's it that we, we've heard a lot about that topic and the doctor recruitment okay so that, so adina would be oh I'd make a motion for Adina to it to be a function of council for Adina to go to that meeting to joint well. services with with the vet request. Okay. Thank you all in favor of that. Please indicate that is carried. Thank you. Any other requests for functions of council? Uh, Holly, please. I'm um, just a clarification with that carbon capture tour. Would that be considered a function of council or not? doesn't matter either way. I just want to make sure I get it right, how to put it on my form. Um, I can speak to that if you want. So it's a function of joint services. It's, that's where it stemmed from. But I wasn't marking it down as a, as a function. It's a, it's a tour of the community. OK, I think that's acceptable that way. If we see it that way jointly, that's good. Are there any other requests for functions of council? Thank you. Yeah, Ariana has has one for us. Nine point three point one, the twenty twenty two Recycling Council of Alberta Circular Economy Conference in October. Do you have information for us on that, or that I think it's it's included? Is it? Yeah, discussed last meeting, a uh, cost estimate was requested, so I've prepared that. I think I've got all the costs in there that could possibly be charged. Um, it works out to just about $2,500 per person. Okay, uh, thank you, Arianna. Holly, please. Just thought it was interesting when they had the, um, everyone was going to Switzerland for these green conferences, and everyone flies there, and it's so much, oh, it is on. Yes. I'm not talking loud enough. Sorry, you know me. It just reminded me of when they have these conferences in, in Europe, and everyone flies in on their special jets for the green conferences. The recycling one is probably the most expensive conference that we've got. I'm thinking that's rather odd. So I don't. I think, given our involvement in recycling, I think the cost is uh, too high to send someone. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. Thank you, Holly Neal. Please. Yeah, I agree with that, and I'm on that committee, and uh, 2500 is way too much. Plus, I don't want to go up there by myself, so it's going to cost you 5000 so let's just scrap it. <laughs> okay, we will let that, let that go. Thank you for that information, Arianna. I think that uh, brought us to a decision. It's good. Yes, we are 
on the committee reports, Newell Recycling Association, Newell Regional Solid Waste Management Authority. Neil, have you got a report for us? Uh, my report is they have a monthly meeting, usually by Zoom, and they're still clunking away. So, kind of a ongoing, nothing changes kind of a committee. That's it. Dave, thank you. Any questions for Neil with regard to that? Seeing none, Recreation Boards, Division 5 and 10, the Rec Board report. Uh, Greg? So, um, yeah, uh, the Rec Board for Division 5 and 10 met, and uh, we reviewed the applications for, um, for grants uh, from the county. Um, there were three applications that were given. One was for um, uh, Lake Noel Resort, uh, for sand and garbage cleanup and things like that at the beach area and, um, and areas around the, uh, around the resort. Uh, that one was, I uh, need the amounts here. Uh, uh, just a second. It was for um, uh, let's see here. Anyway, something like okay, here we are. So total um, total request uh, was for uh, eighty seven hundred dollars uh, total funding. Sorry, to and eighty seven hundred. Uh, plus 400, so 9,100 dollars from Lake Noel Resort. Uh, that one was passed and uh, and granted. The other one was um, was for uh, the Castles uh, Castles Hall for um, a floor cleaner and lighting changes to LED lights. Uh, that one was also passed, and the total amount requested. I uh, don't know why this isn't coming up very easily for me. Um, was for a um, total of, oh, shoot, I, I should have it here. I did have it. Uh, starting to sweat. <laughs> yeah anyway it's yeah so that one was passed and I don't have the total amount but I'll get it for you uh, the third one was for the silver sage uh, for a significant amount of money uh, that one was not passed due to the the problems with uh, not the well the issues with the board at the silver sage so that one um, until they when they get that in order then we'll review it but uh, that one was not passed so, thanks, Greg. Any questions? Seeing none, thanks for that report. Uh, joint services, who is reporting for joint services? Ke Kelly, please. Um, so we, we meet monthly and um, some of the things that were discussed this past month, um, Margaret Plumtree, came and presented on happenings at the Chamber of Commerce. We had a presentation by uh, Shane Cuspertson, uh, and he is hosting the dirt bike uh, trials and tribulations out in the um, special areas. Um, and that is being held in August, and I don't have the dates right handy, but um, they are looking for volunteers if anybody would like to get involved with that. Uh, we had a presentation from Communities in Bloom. Um, they expressed a, a need for more board members and they uh, opened their door to more board members. They would also like to extend uh, the program out into the county and include the, the, all the municipalities, including our hamlets. If, um, if we so chose to get involved um, and that would allow us um, a space on the board as well. So it would mean a motion of council 
to get involved with um, communities in bloom. Uh, what they said about their volunteers is that they're aging out. That's where they're at. Um, doctor recruitment and retention is on, it's a standing um, order on our um, agenda. And uh, what we heard is uh, that we signed a doctor in Bassano. Uh, so we're at 1.5 of our 2.5 limits. Um, and I can just add that we are touring another doctor in Bassano this weekend. So fingers crossed. Um, in Brooks, doctors um, seem to be fairly stable and, and up to par for numbers. Um, economic development, we presented our um, strategic fo focus for 2022-24. And uh, there was just discussion on that. We haven't uh, approved it quite yet. We've um, done some tweaking on it. Mm. Veterinary recruitment, um, that was discussed and has been monthly. So come to us with something new. That's all we ask. Yeah. Um, the immigration uh, strategy, we all passed at the last council meeting. So that's ongoing and we'll see how that plays out. And JBS, um, I understand that um, they are functioning uh, full barrels and um, we heard that they just need more cattle. So if anybody has more cattle, bring them in. Anything else, Greg and Neil? Neil, please. Yeah. We're still working on our rebranding too to bring the county's profile up on par with the with the city of brooks right thank you kelly and neil anything else from joint services or any questions seeing none we'll move on thank you for that kelly um <clears throat> excuse me carbon capture tour yesterday who is reporting on that amanda right thank you uh yes there was about 12 individuals from uh the county, the city, Duchess, EID that attended the uh, tour yesterday. The research station is located in the county of Newell, about 20 kilometers southwest of Brooks. Globally unique, the project involves pumping carbon fluid deep underground, then monitoring the site for emissions and environmental changes. Monitoring technologies developed at the site will provide results that demonstrate the most effective and cost-effective methods in tracking movement of CO2 underground and verifying safe and secure storage. Underground storage is one, of, is one solution in reducing the amount of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels. The project was funded by Ottawa and the, Count and the University of Calgary. The project attracts Canadian and international research groups. To date, the project costs $12 million. It's very interesting and we're happy to see it in our area. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, any questions uh, with regard to that? Seeing none, good report. Good to hear about that and good to hear that happening in our area. That's good. Um, the last committee report is Sewa. Neil? Yeah, Sewa is that uh, Southern Alberta Energy from Waste Association that Ray Jessica spoke on here. They have a, they got a, a Zoom meeting for two hours tomorrow. But basically it's just sitting on hold just as he reported if waiting for government funding they're hoping for a little more because royalties are back up but uh it's just it's a waiting game and we are the area is really lucky to have ray jessica like on this committee at the meetings he's the go-to man for the whole table uh so cross your fingers i mean like when he relayed to you there it's it's 80 new jobs in town it's a total waste disposal site big project but it's kind of like the Bizano hospital Fingers crossed, and away we go. And they are what they're what they're working on right now is grant money to keep it keep it flowing. I think it's a 
if it goes, it's excellent. We can't, we have to watch it, but uh, they're not asking for any money or anything, just support. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Any questions, Neil, about that? Thank you for that report. That's the end of our committee reports. Um, oh, Greg, I'm sorry, thanks. I have the number for my report. <laughs> I apologize for that. The amount given to Castles um, was uh, $17,650. Uh, that was some expenses to um, uh, for rent uh, for um, uh, the purchase of a, of a floor cleaner and to replace slates. Thank you. Oh, Kelly, you've got a question? Okay. Yeah. So my question is, um, in your process, is there a report back on that money? Is there a requirement that the agencies provide receipts or proof of purchase or um, is there any follow-up required other than the check presentation? Go ahead, Greg or Matt. I'll, I'll Matt. take that. Yeah, typically we, uh, we issue payment on submission of receipts. Okay, thank you. I think that's good information. So that is a check and balance that comes of uh, county makes payment based on submission of receipts. So that's good. Yeah, good for us to know. Um, that is the end of our committee reports. I, oh, oh, Dan, you've got a question. Um, if we go back to the compensation review committee, I just send everybody an email. Um, that's the only changes that we've found. And there might be a few of those that are valid that won't actually be changed. So if you can have a quick look at that, that's the only changes we're looking at. So if you're okay with those, that's what I'm gonna send forward. And then we can have this done so that uh, Jackie can carry on about her normal duties. Right, okay, thanks, Dan. Um, now we're at the end of our committee reports. And I believe we do not have any uh, um, post agenda items that are, we are aware of. So we will, there are information items, the strategic priorities chart. Matt, have you got comments on that for us? Uh, no comments. Uh, take a look at it. This shows up on your agenda package for, for information and for you to uh, make sure staff have the right strategic priorities on the go. Um, we will be looking at giving a refresh to this shortly here in April with. Dr. McIntosh. So this is kind of the current state that we're, we're working on and plugging away with. Um, so that, that's all I'd say about that item. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Matt. Any questions? If not, I would, uh, we, we are, at, our, our agenda is vanishing before our eyes, which is not a bad thing, but we're close to, to uh, moving in camera, but we need a motion for that to happen. Someone, oh. Uh, so just prior to that, if we could uh, have Lane come up with our new employee, Dustin, right. to make an introduction. Please, yeah. Lane, please, go ahead. Good morning, Council. Just wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to introduce our newest addition to our staff. This is Dustin Christensen. Dustin is filling the role of projects assistant and uh, He's a local fellow raised in the Rolling Hills area, graduated from the University of Calgary Haskin School of Business, uh, has most recently come to us from an ag lending background, but did spend some time with the County of Warner with the municipal intern program down there. So we're glad to have Dustin join our staff. Just wanted to introduce him to all of council uh, maybe you can shoot some questions his way if you've got any. Thank you, Lane, and welcome to the, the county. I think there will be some, some questions. Um, Holly, please. So what will you actually be doing? 
Yeah, so I'm filling in for Morgan Ross, or Morgan, <clears throat> yeah, Morgan Ross while she's gone on maternity leave here. So I'm going to take over, I believe, primarily the asset management plan and working through that and kind of following through on where uh, she left off on that. So. Yeah, welcome. Any other questions? Great, please. Um, hi, how's it going? Good. How good. Are you? Good. Uh, congratulations. That's Thank great. You. It's good to see a, a, a familiar face. And uh, and uh, yeah, he lives kind of in the Rolling Hills area, but also the Tilly area too. So I just yeah. want to. He's right on the fringe where his parents, where he grew up. So <laughs> yeah, kind well, of a hybrid, up, I guess, yeah. between the two. I went to Rolling Hills School from grade one to grade nine, but uh, yeah, lots of Tilly relationships there too. So. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, yeah, that's probably a good idea. We should introduce ourselves to you. Yeah, fire away. I'm Arno Dirksen, Gem Area Division 9, Reeve of the County. Go ahead, Kelly. I'm from the west side of the county around Pisano. I'm sorry, Greg Screever, um, Lake New Resort, and Castles. Ellen, please go ahead. Hello, welcome. I'm Ellen Unra, and I represent the area around Rosemary, the village of Rosemary. Thank you. Welcome, Amanda Phillip, Phil, uh, Phil Pot, <laughs> um, Duchess. Thank you. Welcome, Ward Neil Johnson, Division Ten. Go ahead, sure. Lynette Cop, Division Three, around uh, Patricia Millicent. Dan Short, uh, Division One, Rolling Hills. Welcome, Adina Scandrip, Garrett Smalley. Welcome, Holly Johnson, Division Four, Scandy Rainier in Bow City, and your sister has spent many hours at our place picking down, helping us with Downey Rome. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you guys. I think he met Matt maybe already. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you guys. Yeah, it's going to be a pleasure working here. I'm really excited about the opportunity. So. Excellent. Welcome. Thanks for coming today. Yeah. Okay. We are ready to move in camera if we have a motion to that effect. Uh, Amanda moves that we go to camera, in camera. All in favor of that, please indicate. That is carried. Thank you.